There's an old folk tale about these people in a village somewhere that for a number of years had been experiencing a severe drought. No matter how hard they hoped, rain never seemed to fall when they needed it. So after a few years of this, the situation was getting very desperate. And so they turned to one of the elders in town and said, what should we do? And the elder said, we should pray. We should gather all of the people in town together in the village center in the square. And together we should all pray that God sends down an abundance of rain on our village. And so the people listened. And they arranged a time and they all began to gather into this place to pray. And as they gathered, they all began to look strangely at this one little boy that was walking kind of behind the rest of them as he took his place in the village. Why were they looking at him somewhat strangely? Because he was the only one in town who brought an umbrella. <laughs> The faith that this little boy had to know that if they gathered together in prayer, the rain would in fact come. A sense of faith and hope that a lot of other people in the village perhaps seemed not to have. See, we all are experiencing in our hearts a drought of some kind or another. There's always something that we feel that we could use an abundance of, whether it's happiness or fulfillment or peace or mercy or healing. There's always something in our lives where we are experiencing some kind of poverty. And yet how often when we ask God to fill us, when we ask God to enrich us in this way, has it become kind of a cursory and nominal experience? Something we do much more out of routine than out of an actual sense of faith and trust in God. To put it another way, how often do we ask God to send the rain of his grace into our hearts, but leave the umbrellas at home? See, we all have this experience where we feel like if we ask, it's not going to be answered. And it comes, that doubt comes from a number of places. Sometimes it comes from our own experience of prayer. Because we have this idea that my prayers have to be answered exactly the way that I want them, in the time that I want them, in the place, and in the manner in which I want them. And if my prayers are answered in any other way, then I tend not to recognize it. I tend to think that God has ignored me, that God has refused to answer my prayers. And the world doesn't help. The world will often tell us that belief and trust in God at best is irrelevant. That we should look for the world to satisfy our desires, to look to the things of the world to fill the emptiness in our hearts. But we've all tried it. We've all looked to the different things of the world in one way or another to fill that emptiness, to fill that drought and that poverty, and we know it doesn't work. We know that something remains unfulfilled. The world can never fulfill us. It just won't happen. But you see, true poverty of spirit knows only one thing, speaks only one language, and that is hope. See, if I have this desire in my heart, it's only reasonable for me to expect that it can be fulfilled. Not a blind desire, but a deep and profound yearning for something that has to be possible or it wouldn't be there in the first place. This woman in the gospel, this woman with the hemorrhage, 
had been experiencing this condition for 12 years. And she had gone to every doctor. She had gone to every person. She had sought all of the remedies that the world had to offer. And none of them worked. How could they? And yet here she was. In the midst of this crowd, she encounters Jesus. And she sees in the person that stands in front of her a healing that the world cannot give. And so moved by this desire to know that if she still desires to be healed, it has to be possible. She reaches out and she touches the cloak of Jesus. And the power comes out from Jesus and heals her. But how many other people the gospel is telling us are touching Jesus? The entire crowd is gathered in close around him. Countless people are reaching out and touching him. But it is only this one woman, only the one who has exhausted the faults and the failures and the fakeness of the world. Only she who has nothing left, only she who has no other obstacles in her heart is able to withdraw and activate the power of Jesus. And how many times have we heard the same voices that come to Jairus after his daughter has died? Why trouble God any longer? Your problems are either unsolvable or too insignificant, or you're not good enough, or God doesn't actually care that much about you. And yet Jesus himself pays no attention to those words. He pays no attention to those who say to Jairus, leave the master alone. Jesus pays attention only to the voice of desire, to the voice that says, do not be afraid, have faith. To the voice that says, be healed. And this is the only voice that Jesus wants us to pay attention to. So in our own lives, we have to ask ourselves, and it's a hard question, why do I not ask God for the things that I truly need? Is it because I don't think he's capable of doing it? Most likely. There's something in me that says God doesn't want to do this for me, or God cannot do this for me. But here's the thing. Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Let me say that again. Jesus Christ rose from the dead. He was killed. He was dead. He was buried. He was gone. And he came back to life. He forgives our sins. He makes himself present to us in simple bread and wine. But you think he can't heal you? You think he can't fulfill every single one of the desires that he himself wrote in your heart? So that you might be drawn out of yourself? so that you might be urged to seek him and him alone and not the things of this world? Trust me, he can do it. As Jesus himself said to Sister Faustina in the Divine Mercy Revelations, it pleases me when souls ask for much because I desire to give much, very much. So my dear brothers and sisters, do not be afraid to hope. Do not be afraid to be bold in your desires and in your requests from God. Do not be afraid to seek the fulfillment of every desire of your heart. Do not be afraid when you ask for rain to bring an umbrella.